Hello everybody, this is Hollywood Mac Connolly with the Double Biceps. It is in the contract, it has to be done every single time we appear on camera. This is the Daily Combat Podcast. Welcome to the show, my co-host, co-founder, co-breather of air, co-wearer of clothes in this very room. It is, in fact, the Count of Monte Cristo, the King of Sting, Thunderlips, the ultimate male. It is the winner of the Dave Stockbridge of the Year Award. It is Dave, Dave Stockbridge, Stockbridge. Welcome to your own show. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the very warm welcome, as always. That's Hollywood, Matt Connolly. No worries. We have a very special guest today. He's coming in as one of the head coaches at Element Martial Arts MMA Kickboxing, <laughs> spinning kick, whatever you do, Jim uh, uh, has been involved in the uh, world of martial arts for over 10 years, had one professional fight, which he won, and then said, oh, I'm retiring, I've, I'm retiring undefeated and, mm. and taking my ball and going home, <laughs> but I'll teach others to do the same. Yeah. <laughs> so please welcome uh, Matt Becker, aka Fez, Fev, and aka uh, Matt Est- Estevez as well, mm, so, mm, a man, man of many mystery. Man of mystery. It was a cloud when you came in before, and then who is that? Who is that? Is that Matt Becker? Well, uh, most of them know. was from me. I'm like, where am I? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> the question mark on the shirt. <laughs> it's like the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> if I confuse enough people, right? That's you'd, right. You'd be surprised we can get away with it. Ah. And, and also, you, you had your own podcast talking to people in the in in the world of MMA and martial arts and all of that and, uh, yourselves. You, 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 this is what you were doing. Yeah, so we uh, we had DC Pirate Radio for a while there. So I reckon right. we did nearly a hundred episodes. So Incredible. They're, they're, scoot, wow. they're scooting around. So it's still probably. still out there. Is people going to jump on board? And yeah, maybe don't maybe don't check out too many of them. Okay, <laughs> yeah. check out check out the later ones. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the, the really end. early ones. <laughs> yeah, that, that's more of a precursor <laughs> of yeah. what you might see in the future. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure we'll bring it back one day. We've we've been we've been saying for the last two years we're going to bring it back. But yeah, we even pre- we even prepared a podcast studio and then we didn't record. You just oh. got to be like friends and wait for Netflix to throw enough money at you, and then you know away you go. So Netflix, if you've got some cash, yeah. throw it my way. And you can have twelve listeners to almost every episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no. our, 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 we started strong, I think, and then we started getting <laughs> worse. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think we've been going well. I, we really am enjoying it, and the great thing about it is that we've been able to sort of highlight some of the amateur. Uh, fighters that might never have spoken to media before or this is the first time they've got an opportunity to actually say hey this is me and this is what i you know what i'm about and you know i mean we had uh, louis payson in last week from cardioflex gym uh, first time he'd ever done anything on camera it was great to, to speak with him and mm. you know it's these sort of it's fun to give people these opportunities when it's like you know i mean hey we're we're goofing around ourselves but you know we enjoy it and it's just great to be able to sort of Hey, well, hey, we'll put something out there and, you know, stick a camera in your face and away you go. And then, you know, hopefully you, when you get, like, the, the big opportunities, you, you've at least got some idea and, and preparation. When they make it on the UFC, we hope to get, right. get interviews. <laughs> it's basically conditional upon that, isn't it? If you make it, you've got to drag us along with you. That's, That's right. what we're hoping for. <laughs> so, yeah. You guys want the shout-out for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So uh, we've got the studio once again resplendent in uh, Element Green. Um, and uh, and that, that's one of the really striking things about uh, what you're doing there at Element. It, instantly recognisable brand that stands for something the minute you see it. Um, was that always your intention? Do you have a marketing background, or, or how, did, how, how did you come about this particular style for uh, for Element? Um, I can't take too much credit to be honest because it was my original coach that came up ah, with the logo. So, okay. uh, like most things in my life, I've just taken it and run with it. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Because when you look at the branding, the, the black and the green, like instantaneously it's recognisable um, and, and that carries through to all that you do. You see the athletes, so they've, they've, they've always wearing the uniform, um, representing the club and uh, and with your upcoming event or branding, it's, it's beautiful, it's consistent, it's sleek and it looks great. Thank you. Yeah, it, it is something we do try and focus on, whether we can uh, call us professional yet or not. But it's something we've always tried to be consistent on at the gym is to try and approach it, even though we've got predominantly amateur fighters. It's like you approach it like a professional, you treat it seriously. Yeah. Um, and then by the time you are a professional, well, then it's easy work. So tell us a little bit about your, your own MMA career. As Matt said, crescendoed early, parachuted out of the sport with... At the height of your game, <laughs> undefeated, Under, undefeated. undefeated. undefeated like undisputed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and then decided I'm going to throw my my considerable energies at helping other young people achieve uh, great things in the cage or, or the ring. 
Yeah, so I think I, I think I thought I was still fighting for a good five years after. <laughs> like, I, was, I was training for a fight that I, I just it wasn't coming up, didn't, wasn't didn't, announced. Well, I didn't, I didn't think far enough ahead to go. Well, you've got to talk to a promoter and get him to because like, the fight that I had was because I happened to know the promoter and I'd been at the gym. He's like, "Do you want to fight?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'll fight." <laughs> just waiting for somebody I to know, ask. I just assumed someone was going to do it again. Yeah. Um, so for that, this is how it works. <laughs> and then I kind of got along, you know, while and we were, I was. I was kind of coaching already and, and helping because, you know, one fight was the most experienced back, back, in, the, yep. back in the day. And then I've realized that coaching is more fun than getting punched in the face. Yeah. Um, I realized that pretty <laughs> early on. Um, so after I'd stopped deluding myself, I'm like, you know, I can probably, like, I, can, I can keep going down this path and probably not be that, like, I'm not the best athlete. Um, mm-hmm. You know, generally I find coaches don't always end up being the best, best athlete. Um, and I and I kind of was very. If I was going to do it, I was going to do it properly, and mm. I was being realistic with myself and realized I probably wasn't going to after after one fight and three years of training without having a second one. I probably wasn't gonna wasn't gonna go all the way to the UFC. So yeah. I I kind of decided to and who to wants focus. to to risk the perfect record as well? well that's that's <laughs> always an issue. That is always an issue. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just I decided to kind of go that route. I was helping people already, and I really got a lot of. Um, uh, enjoyment or a lot of satisfaction out of, of helping people who were as naive and, 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 and dumb as I was thinking about it. It's like, oh, you know, if, if you don't wait three years and message the promoter, you might get a second prize. And, you know, it's just little tidbits it's like that. good advice. <laughs> yeah. Lived, lived experience yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, your first fight, because uh, I couldn't seem to find video of it. Um, how, yeah. how did you go? Uh, so I won by decision. So... Okay. Um, I think you guys were being generous calling it pro. I think it was back in the it was it was back before the cage was legal. Right. Um so it was in a ring. But um yeah, it was one of, it was that time when there wasn't really the distinction. I'm pretty sure that I was doing the I was doing the generous rules, so it's it, I would I would have said it'd be closer to amateur than pro. Oh, that's but, fine. but there <laughs> You were in the cage. I'll, I'll, t- I'll take it, I'll take it. But yeah. Um it was yeah, back I think it was the last show before the cage was approved uh-huh. in South Australia. So uh it's at the Thebby Theatre. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a, in a promo- I think they did a couple for that promotion, but yeah, it's obviously not going on anymore. It's the guys that used to do the pro wrestling. Oh. Um, they did a MMA show, so that's how I knew them. The pro wrestling show was next door to where I used to train in MMA, and awesome. Went from there. Yeah, were you uh, like the main event, or you were? No, what? I was just another guy, just yeah. another guy on the card. There was, I, I went back and looked through the um, the card the other day. I think it was um, Tony Caruso was on the card Shane Mitchell was on the card oh. Dan Curry was on the card because I looked at it I'm like oh wait I could have uh, hmm. I could have been somebody if, I, <laughs> <laughs> if I'd stuck with this but uh, there might have been a distinction between some of those guys and, uh, and, and my and my level of that. Right. And, and mostly a grappling style is that what you implement? Um, I was doing quite a bit of boxing at the time as well I had a really good boxing coach but I think he probably would have called me a grappler okay. as well so <laughs> <laughs> It's not a good sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a great grappler, that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had him on the pads last week, great grappler. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, fantastic. And, and now you're turning your attention to running events uh, also. So uh, how, how did all of that come about? Uh, so we're part of the outer, Train Outer program. So it's formerly called Wimp to Warrior. Uh, so they've just gone through a big rebranding and I think they've realised that Wimp, Wimp to Warrior, like, Sounds great to a certain type of people, but it's maybe not as as approachable oh, as the I, general I'm public. I'm a wimp. Let, yeah. me, let me do something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got a big rebrand push. So we're, we're their we're their first uh, we're their first one in South Australia. Incredible. Um, they've got programs. So uh, John Kavanagh runs it in Ireland for all of Ireland. Oh, Daniel nice. Cormier runs it for at AKA. Cool. Um, the City Kickboxing guys run it. Mm-hmm. It's run out of Perth um, in Alex Wokanowski's gym. So like it's... Wow. And then the, again, just a little old RC yeah. in South Australia. So. And, and how did that come about for you guys? Uh, so we just got con- we got contacted. They'd been looking for places in South Australia. I think they'd spoken to a few people. and They really know, liked they, Green. They knew, some, they knew someone that, that knew me and got my number and it kind of went from there. So mm. um, right place, right time, I think, is uh, probably the way I'd describe it. But And tell us a little bit more about that whole concept. So uh, it... Went to worry if people know what that is. Uh, um, now it's rebranded. Have they changed much else apart from the branding? Is there much else in the background that's, that's well, changed? It, it into? used to be attached to a TV show. Okay. Um, so originally it was like a kind of Ultimate Fighter type thing. So they filmed it. They only did it in one spot and they filmed it and they released it as a as a TV show. Whereas mm-hmm. now they've kind of doing it as a package 
around the world. We don't film it, but everyone's kind of doing it in their own yeah. own playground for it. So the concept behind it is, is getting people that have um, not trained before or mm-hmm. have Oops. trained and go, have, <laughs> have trained and kind of maybe like uh, they're not as athletic as they used to be. I had some promise where they've kind of, you know, stopped exercising for a few years and, and giving them a, like a bit of a... Hey, well, Damo did suggest we have... We've got, oh another, God. We've got another season starting in January. So we think the main event of the next flight card could be... Maybe this, this people would just want to punch me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you'd be really good for this program. <laughs> we've got a specific goal in mind for you. Right, exactly. Do you like taking punches? <laughs> Right. And so it was, it was just one of those things where uh, you know some, somebody who likes what you're already doing sees sees what you're doing, understands your ethic, and uh, and it, it looks like you guys have already very much got a development program in place. So um, for you guys to bring and induct talent into the sport from a relatively low skill set, so really this is for anybody off the street that's ever liked the idea of getting in the cage and I guess uh, making it easy and, and accessible for those people to give it a go and, and, and you guys are opening your doors so that it's easy for those people to understand what to do from day one if that's their ambition is to step into the cage one day. Yeah, it's a real crash course. So you don't have yeah. to fight at the end. We've got, okay. we've got some people that aren't fighting at the end because that's not the point necessarily. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to, it's great. Yeah. It's a great experience and it's, I, I think it is a good part of it to get punched in the face once in your yeah. life it's uh yeah it certainly sorted me out um <laughs> but we've got people that are, are doing it and it's, it's just a, a kind of a, a kick in the ass to 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 go in a different direction so they, they train five days a week they train every day um they come in and do our additional sessions we've got some of the guys now that um, guys and girls are uh, jumping in with our fight team and doing some of our fight team training so over the course of um well it's pretty big, we're about four months in now so we've still got a bit okay. to go we've got you know people that came in that have never trained before and now they're so it's four training months with Fight team, so, yeah. so four months into a uh, is it a five month program? Uh, so, so it's yes, five months, and then the capped off with the with the event at the end, and at, then you yeah, get a month off, and then you're off for another program. So it's kind of a rotating intake to. So is it one of the rules that you're not to have had too much experience before, or not to have had a fight before, or is there a level that you're looking to recruit from? Uh, it's primarily people that have no experience. No, um, that's the no, idea. There's so. no like hard and fast rules, but obviously, yep. if you've some, you know, if someone calls me up that's been training mm-hmm. and fighting for five years, <laughs> that, you can come do the program. But you're not you're not going against somebody who's done five months training. At the end, you're going to yep. be getting someone that's equal experience. So, uh-huh. right. um, yeah, that's it. Doesn't doesn't work that way as much as people might like it to. <laughs> but um, you know, it's a great program. Like we've got we've got some people that have trained with us previously or were training with us that just wanted to to ramp it up and get extra sessions in. Yeah. And we've got other people that, you know, started um, with no experience. And I, and I think they'd be, they'd be quite open in saying that they don't have any fitness or great athletic background. Like they weren't, they weren't coming in after you know, 10 years of, of arm wrestling and coming in already fit and strong like you guys. Um, you know, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a big sliding scale of people. We've got people, you know, in their late, in their late thirties, mm-hmm. um, early forties, yeah, I was going to ask. Have you. been working, you know, have been working in an office, haven't done anything physical for twenty years, that have mm. kind of popped in. So it's structured in a way that you don't, you know, you're not getting killed on the first day. We 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 build it up gradually, so by the end of it, you are in a better place. You are it, fitter. And, and you kind of touched on it just then. But what what type of people are attracted? Are you finding it's a broad cross section, or uh, who who's, who makes up your inductees? Yeah, so I think uh, if if you've ever been to F forty five class, it's kind of the similar type vibe. So. Right. I, this is just my personal opinion, but mm-hmm. I think that's part of the rebranding. Is I think what they thought they were going to do is they were going to get a, a like a heap of eighteen-year-old tradies to come in and do it. Uh-huh. Um, and whereas in reality, it's it's more people that are a bit more established or a little bit more in in that that rut of life or that you know they're getting into yeah. the routine. There's that point that you hit in life. You're like, well, am I going to do this for the same thing every day for the next forty years, or yeah. do I want to do something a little bit exciting to add mm-hmm. it in there? So yeah, it's it's a big spectrum. We've obviously we've got people in their early twenties and we've got people. Uh, late 30s early 40s but right. it's predominantly more people that um are trying to kickstart their fitness or kickstart their their training opposed to people that are already walking around with eight packs and 
yeah. and beach muscles. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so it does sound fantastic. I mean, to, to go straight into five day week training in, in MMA, uh, especially if you've never done any anything like that before, because, you know, MMA, <laughs> you're covering so many different aspects from wrestling, kickboxing, your jiu jitsu, your Muay Thai, you, you got your, your cardio fitness, you've got, you know, your strength and conditioning. There's so many elements to it. And to, to cover all of those and to get the opportunity, even for somebody to say, hey, look, I, you can come in and five days a week you'll get like proper coaching and, and leading towards if you want to take a fight at the end it's amazing amazing mm-hmm. opportunity yeah and uh, <clears throat> when um you're um uh, uh, when when you're getting these inductees uh, starting what, what does their first week or so look like um how how do you how do you bring them into the process and how, is it just you know you just chuck them in the deep end and you know they, they, throwing up there on the mats or how how does it all work for uh, getting these people that haven't done anything maybe for years and getting them back into uh, or or into the routine of a of a mma fighter uh so we kind of go the opposite right so uh i'm a big fan send them for ice creams yeah send them for ice creams well the first day we don't really do much exercise at all it's really about like why you're here i want to know know what's your motivation what what goals you're trying to get out of it because i don't want to Maybe you don't want to fight. Maybe you just want to get fit. Maybe you just want to do something. Maybe you want to make some new friends. Like a, there's many motivations for why people seek out team sports or, or seek seek out a seek out a gym. So mm. understanding that helps us coach. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm kind of a, a believer in the in the sport, small, permanent, meaningful changes. So the problem with smashing them or going really hard, real quick, is we all know people or potentially been in ourselves where you, you go and start this new sport and you love it. Yeah. You know, I come in. I. I, I I was I threw up. I was exhausted. I was sweating. Mm. Best session. Never see that person again. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's too hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas if you can build up to it, and go, you know, we might actually just do fifteen minutes worth of work today. Which is fifteen minutes of work is a lot if you mm. haven't done much work. We're doing a long warm up. We're learning some philosophies, and we're you know, maybe hit the pads, hit the bag for a, for a couple rounds, build up to it. By the time <coughs> you've done four or five weeks of that, wait a minute. Now now I'm doing forty five minutes, and then you do another four or five weeks. Wait, I went for that whole hour, and I wasn't even tired. So mm. um, I I like to um, like trick ourselves into building good lifelong habits. So that usually happens by building it up incrementally and, and being a bit kinder to yourself. As long as you rock up, I, I don't actually care if you don't work that hard in that session. Yeah. Now, if you're on my fight team, you might find that you get a different map <laughs> sometimes. But like if we're talking about new people, beginners, we're trying to build you up. Like I'm like less is more. Mm. The fact that like the, the best thing you can do as a beginner is come. Yeah. Like, we just rock turn up to the gym and you, you're going to be better than you were. Even mm. if you sat on the sideline and watched, or if you ran, did half of the session, like, I'm exhausted. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch for five minutes and jump back in because before you know it, you will be doing that whole session. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. You can see that. Uh, this is one thing that's always sort of frustrated me with the fitness industry, uh, especially as where I'm working. But um, is that people will, will get a trainer and the trainer will just destroy them for like you know four weeks and then that person just quits yeah. and it's like and then their their view of fitness is that it's incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult to get to get into shape. Uh, and then from there on, if they're looking at losing weight or, or whatever their goal is that might be fitness related, they're like, oh my God, I, I, they're intimidated because it's like, I know how hard that was. And it's like, you I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whereas, you know, instead of doing one ridiculously hard session, it's like, just go three times a week, just get yourself there and do something. Go for a walk on the treadmill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go for a walk on the treadmill for five minutes, do it for two weeks. Yeah. It's yeah. going to make a difference. Just get into the routine, into the habit. And it's like, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which is why Monday nights are always the busiest at every gym. <laughs> so everyone does Monday, half the people do Wednesday, and hardly anyone does Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's doing chest on Monday as well. So it's International Chest Day, if you're, if you're not aware. But yeah, uh, yeah it is, it's an interesting dynamic. And uh, I always... When people, you know, they're doing, oh, I'm doing five-hour training sessions. Why are you doing five hours? Yeah. You just started. <laughs> which, which sport are you elite? Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, which, which Olympics are you going to? Like, you don't need to train for five hours. Exactly. Unless you are a professional athlete. That's right. And, and as part of this um, uh, whole global organization uh, th- uh, that's facilitating all of this, is there a template or, 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 or a way that's given to you guys to... Uh, bring these people up to speed or um, is it more you're using the techniques that you've garnered over years now of, of training um, athletes and getting them ready for, for being in the ring or cage? Uh, it's a bit of both. So mm-hmm. the train guys have been great. They've, you know, they, they give you the the processes and what you need to build it up, but they also have a pretty, um, it was quite a robust conversation about like vetting process. They've got very particular about who and who they won't um, 
allow to, to use their brand. So again, they made at least one mistake, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming they're good for the rest of it. But um, they also give you like kind of a lot of, lot of wee way to, to leeway to tweak these things. Like they know they're getting um, great coaches involved. So mm. if you're, you, you don't need a great coach, if you're just going to follow a, a cookie cutter um, philosophy. So sometimes they need a rest day. Sometimes they need to train a bit harder. Um, and, that, and that great coach is Damo. Damo's the one that's been running the program. So I'm not trying to take credit for it. But yep. um, so he does a really great job of that kind of using the, their, you know, they've got the, um, the scale of the entire world and they've been doing it for years and years and years to do it. We incorporate our own fundamentals program in there because we know how to do it and we know what works and we kind of use the best of both worlds to, to get mm. people going. And when you spoke of Damo, Damien Vola, um, who was our guest here a couple of weeks ago as well and uh, in line for a, a title fight from what I understand very, very soon. I heard from a little birdie that might still be in the mm. works. Yeah. I, I heard it from him. <laughs> <laughs> a very big birdie. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, um, uh, well, t- tell us more about how it is that you came to be in martial arts in the first place. Uh, was it like us watching Karate Kid, or how did it come up? Come, it was Karate Kid, we, wasn't we were, it? We were having a chat yeah. before, and no, it, it was Kickboxer. Kickboxer, so it was Karate, was karate Kid on cocaine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the real man. Yeah, yeah the, Karate the, Kid. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so it was. It was exposure to to those nineteen uh, eighties action films. That that, were, that had a lot to do. I, with that, I reckon yeah. it had a lot to do with the explosion of in the popularity of martial arts in the eighties and nineties. Blood, blood sport, yeah. Blood sport. It was for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. still watch it these days. So we just put it on for a bit of motivation. <laughs> I do. It's still really good. Like yeah. it's, <laughs> it still holds up. It does. It literally does. The fights they did there were very well choreographed, and uh, yeah, they really corp- incorporate. And Going blood sport now. <laughs> <laughs> they really incorporated a lot of different fighting styles through um their I don't know their their actors I guess you know they had Muay Thai they had grappling they had sumo they had you know all this sort of thing and it was twenty like, years ahead of Dana White they were, they? Yeah. yeah that's right they didn't have the moat with the alligators in it though that was the thing that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sport could have been blood so sport much too. More. Blood sport too. That's right. Yeah. Oh man, they made so many terrible sequels. <laughs> Didn't they have that in the original plan for the UFC? That's why. Yeah, I said, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one of the uh, original ideas that they were considering. Let's put a moat around there with some crocodiles and alligators in there, you know, and people have to walk across like a drawbridge to get into the cage. And, and is that similar to, to the setup that. that you guys I'd pay have to got? See that? Come down the bridgeway. On uh, the, the, I was going to say on bridge, at the bridgeway. Is that part of the setup that you guys are working? <laughs> I'm upset that I'm digging this moat. <laughs> had to be done. Had to be done. That's right. It's for the aesthetics. You just, yeah, it's for the gram. Well, <laughs> give me one good reason not to bring crocodiles in here. That's, That's right. And they, they didn't have one, so crocodiles. <laughs> Were you holding a crocodile while you were saying that? Couple. Couple. <laughs> and is there any reason why you're holding a banana on this label? <laughs> Um, ideas man ideas man ideas man so, uh, so we, we'll just touch on this momentarily uh, but the, our sponsor today <laughs> as, as was last week as it turns out because it was the only product we had on the table so uh, we did incorporate it but uh, Dirty Clean Eats and, and this is um, t- tell us what your involvement is with uh, Dirty Clean Eats so I'm the, I'm the man holding the banana you are so uh, let's let's get there you go yeah no, okay so there we <laughs> there we go uh, there's a man <laughs> Holding a banana just there, and let's just move this aside so you can see. See the resemblance. It's a bit younger then. Do you guys have do you guys have a banana? banana? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, the banana. <laughs> now this is a turmeric ginger sparkling soda with honey and lemon. Sans banana. No banana. No banana, no banana, banana found in this Bananas product. Bananas are too expensive. So if you are banana intolerant, don't let the label mislead you. This is a product for you. There's also no egg beaters in there. Or the, eggs. No eggs. No eggs no, or an egg beater. No. Okay. So no. No. Okay. Well, so this is... Um, it's I a mean, very it's misleading label. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Jimmy Bang Bang. It's the, uh, the other gentleman on the, on the label. The infamous Jimmy Bang Bang. Jimmy Bang Bang. And uh, so tell us a little bit how all, all of this came about. Dirty Clean Eats. So, uh, Jimmy Bang Bang and myself, we originally, we're just having a chat, we're going camping and talking around the fire, and it originally started as kind of a men's mental health, men's fitness lifestyle, we're just having a chat about um, life and, and, and whatnot, and I, it kind of came up, I'm like, it's probably the first time I've, I've actually just had a conversation like this with another man, I would have been in my, you know, my mid-twenties by that point, I'm like, that's, that's odd, that's, uh, you know, that's strange that I've made it this far in life and we haven't had that. So we kind of started, yeah, it's a bit of a lifestyle. It was just a creative outlet. We were both working corporate jobs that we weren't particularly fond of. But, um, yeah, creative outlet. We were putting up um, some recipe, healthy eating recipes, um, some articles, just random things that we 
um, that we found interesting. We just kind of, yeah, had a podcast, creative. Yeah. Uh, and then we were training in Bali. Um, a friend of ours, Luke Howard, was uh, living over there as a professional fighter, still is. Uh, just released his Fundamentals Boxing course. If you want to check that out, no. you want to learn to box, check. What's the website? Uh, well, could, day could, One Boxing. Day One you Boxing. You nearly called me out Ooh. there. <laughs> Did very well. Good save. Yeah. Good yeah. save. Good yeah. save. I'm pitching him. He's got it on the back of his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the shirt worked. <laughs> so uh, we're over there, and uh, uh, Jamu, which is what the product is, is really common in Indonesia. Jamu. So that that's the the type of drink this is. Yeah. So it means health tonic in health tonic Indonesia. Mm. Yeah. Essentially, um, there's a couple of different translations, but and they make it's made so many different ways. So. Um, we went over there, we were drinking it, we were liking it. We came back and we're like, well, where do I, where do I get it? And Jimmy Bang Bang started making it for me and for him. We made a, a version, it's kind of a Aussie cross version. So we've used some things that aren't really found in Indonesia combined with the turmeric and the ginger. Um, we did some research on it. So things like, without boring everyone, uh, like black pepper makes the curcumin in turmeric more bioavailable. Oh. Um, so having a little bit of that in there, you can't taste pepper drink it but having a bit of that in there makes it so you can absorb the turmeric uh better or so the scientists tell us mm -hmm. um and yeah he was making it for me he was making it for himself we're drinking it friends and families wanted it and we got to a point where like we're spending <laughs> a lot of money on turmeric <laughs> 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 um, you know it's, it's you know i love we, we both loved our sisters and our parents but it's like you guys are costing us quite a bit of money turmeric isn't a cheap uh, yeah. a cheap product so we just started um the turmeric dealer started yeah, asking questions it. we just started <laughs> <laughs> Started uh, selling it for mates' rates, and before you knew it, then friends and family wanted it. We're like, well, now we, okay, now we're, you know, we're we're not going broke buying ingredients, but now yeah. we're working ten hours a week and we're yeah. not making any money. So let's let's uh, let's go get a label designed. Now we've already got a logo. Doesn't doesn't line up with the product, <laughs> but no one until now has pointed that out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just started selling. It kind of kind of snowballed from there. So now we're in Drake's um, supermarkets. We're in we were in a heap of cafes before. Uh, well, the cafe shut down two years ago, but we've, we're in a few of them now. We were yep. now we do a lot of online sales, so we do a lot of online sales. We're in Drake's. We've just rolled out to Queensland, so uh, we're in all Drake's in Queensland as well. So incredible, yeah. It's kind of uh, it's and kind of and uh, and, uh, and all made and bottled here in in Adelaide. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's made in. Uh, we've got a factory at Hackham. Okay. Um. So it's it's ninety nine ninety eight percent Australian ingredients. There's a couple of the um like the small like the cinnamon. Sometimes you can't quite get it. Seasonal yep. spices, but the turmeric, ginger, all that, all that is Australian, wow. Australian made. Where uh, Jimmy Bang Bang's got his uh, little gardening patch at the end. The long, long goal is to make our own turmeric and grow our own ginger and kind of do it all. Yeah, organic farm. Fantastic. He, when he makes me wear the, the same dress, and we'll, <laughs> that's when I'm like, mate, we're not a turmeric business anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, they are, we're a little bit, a little bit hippie, a little bit alternative with it. Oh, that's and, awesome. And uh, the honey and lemon, obviously the most popular flavour? Most definitely. So we had the original flavour and we realised real quick that people don't like things. that. Um, so not enough people liked it that didn't have that that taste. They were used to it. So yep. um, we, we thought long and hard about it because we didn't want to go down. Like I wasn't going to dump heap of sugar in there. The whole point of it was a, as a healthy drink that I could drink instead of having a beer or instead of having a Coke or just some, it was water and coffee. And I'm mm. like, well, I need a... I need a third thing every once in a while. So, so it's not it's not an alcohol. It's not an alcoholic drink at all. No, it, it's a, it it kind of like kombucha, but tastes good. Yes, yeah. So it, it, it sits in the <laughs> shelf next to kombucha, but it tastes nothing like kombucha. Yeah, it's in right. the same family, but yeah, it's in the same family. You know, of beverages. From the good you tasting drink it, family, you know, you know what I mean. You yeah, know, you yeah. You can taste like oh, okay, I understand what you mean, but it doesn't actually taste anything like kombucha. It doesn't. No, no, no. Absolutely not. It, it, I think maybe more the texture and the effervescence mm. and uh, and maybe some of the. Um, um, the aftertaste, it, 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 there might be some that's vague like similarity. That's like a ginger beer almost. It's a, yeah, gin, yeah, actually, that's, a, that's, a, that's probably even closer, isn't it? Especially with that flavour. It's mm. a, but it's not, a, it's not one of those um, sweet drinks and that, uh, uh, at all, mm. it, it's, it, but still really refreshing. Mm. So, yeah. Just a hint of honey so it makes the medicine go down. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, available at Dirty Clean Eats website as well? Yeah, dirtycleaneats.com. You can buy it. If you want to use a discount code DJAMU, you get 20% off. Oh. Exclusive. Well, Didn't. What was oh, the discount? No. You went through do, that so fast. What was the discount code? Do you Jamu. Do you do, Jamu. Do you Jamu. So J-A-M-U. Yes. Jamu. Do you Jamu. 
Yeah. Oh. And so, if that doesn't work, just send us a message on Instagram or Facebook and I'll fix it for you. And definitely don't use Damien Volar's code, whatever you do. <laughs> so uh, don't do, don't do I that. To, I have to give him a card if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> and you've also got, yeah, you were going to... You, you I, I, I mean, you, you were right onto it, but yeah. It, it, so um, uh, Roll Clean, um, they've, uh, so tell us a little bit about the connection with Roll Clean and you guys. Uh, so that's a, another local brand. So I um, just came into contact with Kat, who runs that, came into she's local in the jiu-jitsu scene. She mm-hmm. sells and, and distributes her product to a lot of the martial arts gyms in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. Um, so she basically came up with a similar philosophy to what we were doing with, with VC. This is probably how we... Uh, connected and started chatting is it's um the soaps and and um the products that we can use these days can be quite harsh on the body and when they're being mass produced and they're being who knows all or what's going in there without going down that's a whole different podcast about about the effects on testosterone and everything else that's kind of going into some of this fancy stuff i've not used soap for 38 years you can tell you can tell (laughs) <laughs> That's why he brought some today. Mm. <laughs> he told the broad, you got to bring soap, you're going again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so it, I guess it, it seems like really aligned with the ethic of, of, of your business in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, so in martial arts, obviously, uh, like skin infections and keeping clean is a real priority because there's so much physical contact. So yeah. um, having a, a good local brand that can help with that, it's got, it's got a, like antibacterial... Um, stuff so it's got the all the nasty stuff that's normally in there not in there good stuff that's going to keep your body working um, and keeping your own personal like bacteria and all the good stuff that's on your skin working um, you know uh, Kat's done quite a bit of uh, research that I don't understand but mm-hmm. I've spoken to her about it and I've asked her about it and she said lots of words I don't understand which got the tick of approval from me yes I could tell she <laughs> thought about it you know when you ask someone a question and they just yeah. write off some nonsense she'd she'd obviously looked into it it's very yeah, important yeah. to her <laughs> um, that it's actually a good product and that works out well well for me. So um, she's a sponsor of Damo and a few of the other boys at the gym as well. So we have it all stocked at the gym. Their presence from Damo because, yeah, he said... He'd noticed. He, he, he mentioned he hadn't had a bath in a while, so... Uh. <laughs> but did he also mention how manly I was? He did. He <laughs> yeah. did mention that. So, yeah. <laughs> the... Uh, um, have you tasted it yet? That's the big question. <laughs> they do look delicious. Oh, I have not. So Okay. Do you know anybody who has? I'm pretty sure Damo's eating a couple. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way I'm selling them that quick. He, he was salivating <laughs> when he was showing them on the screen the other day. He was, oh, oh, yeah. So uh, mm. I'm going to bring that image up again from their website because uh, it does yeah, look delicious. Look by the like way, so delicious cakes. So roll clean delicious, uh, delicious soaps. It should be called, but I'm sure you know. Probably not as good for your health as Dirty Clean Eats beverages. Um, I would not, you st- I would drink Dirty Clean Eats and rub the soap on your skin, but if you have to, eat the soap, rub Dirty Clean Eats on your skin. <laughs> either but way. As long as you buy it. Yeah, it's a, either way, once, it's a, once it's in your possession, you do what you want with it. Yeah, it's like that milk that you know, you're not meant to drink, but you know people... Bath milk. Oh, you know, okay. yeah, yeah. You, you Have you been drinking? Be, bath should be, you shouldn't be drinking bath milk, but you know, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know, here's a straw with your bath milk. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the, it does look delicious. Um, so, uh, dirty clean eat. Um, so, um, oh, getting ten. Uh, even see discount. chocolate bar. Yeah, chocolate lemon, bar. You can't lemon, call it chocolate bar and then say it's not to eat. You, you can't have a range of soaps in the same <laughs> flavours as Arnott's biscuits <laughs> and expect people not to get hungry looking at it or expect to, uh, them not to eat it at some stage. I'd probably have a nibble of the chocolate just to test. <laughs> I'd probably just if I was going to test. You got to know. You got to know. And then yeah. I'd, you'd probably go. It tastes like soap. <laughs> mm. I'm taking this chocolate bar back. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I want my money back. Um, so, um, so. Tell us more about what's going on on the third of December. So that's the the Bridgeway Hotel. Um, so and this is you. Uh, this is a lot of the talent that you've been working on and inducting through this uh, this international program. And this is their chance to test their metal in the cage. Yeah. So we've got um, we've got a, a card we're pulling together. So there's about four or five matchups from people that are being through our ultra program. Yeah. Um, and then we've just got some local talent from South Australia. We're trying to showcase. So we've got most of the. The familiar players involved, uh-huh. um, and yeah, it's just another opportunity to kind of help. Uh, I've really, been, we're really focusing on uh, amateur fighters, newer fighters, that more of a, a development squad. Like, there's already um, there's already a promotion in Adelaide that does a really good job of of showcasing and going for that the upper echelon, and we're not trying to. Um, compete with someone that would do a better job than us on it. Um, we're trying to... We're, oh, we're trying talking to Ike there, yeah. aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're definitely not competing with Ike. <laughs> we're, uh, we're trying to kind of do something a bit 
a little bit different or I feel a little bit more of a niche. So um, it should be some really exciting fights. We've got some really talented up-and-comers and probably a little bit more like what you guys are doing is we're getting in. We're getting in early. Getting in early. You know, I know a couple of the couple of the people I've seen already, a couple of people I've heard of from the other gyms. Like, there's some real uh, good amateur talent. So you're definitely gonna you're definitely gonna get a good show. You're gonna get a get a good look in it. And then I think uh, I think you might see a few of those people again too, just from from mm. what I've seen so, so far. It sounds like you're still building out the card, but you're expecting there to be a dozen or so fights over over the night. Yeah, we've got about thirteen fights. Just a busy night. Yeah, so uh, we've got a couple more that we're chatting through, mm-hmm. um, but it's also early days. Things always can fall apart. So yep. we've got uh, we've got the. Uh, the outer guys are doing the finale, which is the chance for them to, to show what they can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a couple of sand shell bouts. Oh, yeah. Huh. Um, so we've actually got a few. Uh, How good is sand shell all of a sudden, hey? Mm. Every, everybody's favourite form of it, martial arts. It is. <laughs> <laughs> what was the difference with sand shell with a rule set? Uh, so there's a couple different Whatever you versions. want them to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a couple of different versions. So we've got... It's quite um, so beloved in the world of MMA right now. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a couple... Uh, we've actually got a couple karate versus karate oh. matchups. So it's people that are kind of coming from a different discipline that can't always... Or I, I can't always get in there um, to to jump in some of the other rule sets because it, it's too different from what they've mm. been practicing. So uh, that is the beauty of the Sanchao rules is there's a few different versions of it where you can make it fairer mm-hmm. for di- people coming from different martial arts. So yeah, we've got a couple of um, karate showcase f- matchups. We've got a couple of new newer students. We've also got a few like black belts that um, obviously been doing karate for a long time to kind mm. of showcase their skills. We've got some um, some Muay Thai guys coming over to do some Sanchao bouts. So it'll be very similar to. Um, to what they're doing, but in the cage and with a few extra rule tweaks with some of the takedowns. But we've got some, yeah, some really good, uh, yeah, Muay Thai guys coming out as well from a couple of the the big gyms, which is always good to have. And yeah, we've got all the uh, the the some of the best talent from all the the local gyms for, on the MMA scene as well. They're making their debuts or they're having their, mm. you know, their first second fight where we can kind of see them grow and see you know how much better you are from fight to fight. Who who should we be looking out for? Oh, there's a few. Well, every, obviously everyone from my club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is who is the guys from your club? So um, we've got a couple of guys on our on our on our development squad. I think they're the, one, the same ones that that, that Damo spoke about. I'm, I'm always worried about um, these type of situations because you say the wrong one. And you yeah, forget. exactly. So, You're like, hang on. Um, hmm. So we've we've got me, Dean, uh, competing. He's competed before. This will be his second bout. So oh, um, he's one to watch. But he's also fought before and you know, got a second round TKO. So he's probably already done the talking for himself. Um, mm-hmm. Doesn't need me to sprick him as much. Uh, we've got uh, Jacob, or the dessert, as he's, uh, <laughs> as he's known. Mm. You, can, uh, you can ask him why that's his <laughs> name. Yeah. So he's, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. he's coming across from a quite a long like swimming career. So he, he made it pretty, oh. pretty, pretty far down that route and wow. came over. It's always nice when someone already knows how to train, already knows how to, Act like an athlete. Mm, um, yeah. He's been training with us for about a year, but he's it's different. He's pretty good, yeah. Really yeah. good yeah, he's, o- he's overhand punches. He's, uh, <laughs> it's overhand rights. The, 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 watch, out the back, watch out for the back. Watch <laughs> <laughs> uh, So he's making his debut at middleweight. Uh, okay. And we've got yeah. another guy from our club, Leo Lightweight. Again, he's been training for about a year. Um, not a swimmer. Mm-hmm. Apparently, apparently, the boys went swimming today, and he's definitely not a swimmer. <laughs> um, but luckily, he's a good fighter. So right. if he's in, a, he's not in a swimming contest. He's in a fighting contest. So. Uh, and he should be another one to watch. Any good nicknames uh, already attributed? Uh, so, uh, as a ring announcer, I, I do oh. love a good nickname. So, so I don't so, know if you've so fixed any out of has got a few, but he doesn't. Uh, none of his can be said in polite. <laughs> 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 we're, we're a big believer in the uh, your nickname should be a little bit uh, tongue in cheek. Okay, um, and that's very big in like the jiu jitsu and like Brazilian nicknames are always a bit funny and a few of the other gyms we've we've kind of worked with over the years have the same thing so you definitely earn your nicknames at element but they might not be the nickname yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. not the ones you were looking for yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah I, I give the nicknames to the guys at the arm wrestling club and um yeah sometimes they'll come up with their own one and i'm just you sure that's what you want <laughs> <laughs> do you, you want to be that guy you yeah. can't yeah. give yourself a nickname no well that's no, right well. No, sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. isn't that right hollywood yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose if you put it on a shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that makes it all legit. Yeah, it doesn't right, matter who made right. it up. But once it's on a shirt, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's merch and uh, that's all that matters. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> so, um, so big event, 3rd third, uh, third of December. Now, if people want to get tickets in advance, can they do that? Can they go to the website? Where can they do that? So if you go to elementmartialarts.com.au, you might be able to find your way to it. Okay. Um, it's, we're in kind of pre-release, so we've been selling directly through the gyms and the fighters so that they... 
like get, a speakeasy get, get, thing. Get, you've got to get, know a guy get, to get a ticket. That's, at this um, stage. It's underground. It wasn't by design, but it's created some groundswell. <laughs> <laughs> never underestimate how far incompetence can get you. <laughs> <laughs> Doing an event, you can't buy tickets. Yeah. Who would have thought that would have been the must? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. uh, but you can get them directly through the gyms and the fighters, and that's always the best way to do it because fighters get a kickback, gyms get a kickback. Okay. Um, but we're releasing... And what are the other gyms that are involved? Uh, so we've got uh, Trinity involved. Yep. We've got... Uh, Cardioflex involved. We've yep. got M16 involved. We've got United involved. Fantastic. I've uh, got technicians tie boxing involved. Brilliant. We've got frontline Muay Thai involved. Yeah. I'm going. Th- I've got VT1 from Sydney coming over for a few wow. a few matchups. I'm trying to run through the list in my head. If I've forgotten you, it's not deliberate. It yeah. is um, because there's a lot. It is because I'm trying to memorize thirty. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Shobakan uh, Karate. We've got mm. the McGill Dojo in Karate coming out as well. I know there's one at least that I've forgotten and I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to apologise in advance. <laughs> That's right. They'll get a big shout out on the night. That'll yeah. be fine. Make sure we get them a big shout out. <laughs> so, uh, so if you're associated with any of those clubs at, at this point, they're the people to go to in order to get yourself a ticket. As we draw close to the event, there might be opportunities on the door for the three tickets that are left. As of Monday, it'll be available online. So we've, we've built the Oh, they will be online. I've built, okay. I've, I stumbled through this week figuring out how to make them available online. Uh, okay, so, well done. So if you can go through, there is a way to buy them online right now. So okay. choose your own adventure. It's just not advertised. Okay. <laughs> the advertising will be as of Monday. I'll tell you with a little, little few less clicks and exactly how to buy tickets. With that said, I've already sold a thousand dollars tickets online wow. somehow. Congratulations! Without, without I said it no one knows that, about it yet. I'm like, if That's I, just some guy by accident. He, <laughs> just, he put a lot in his cart and didn't. And him, he, if when, I spent <laughs> all the money on advertising and made it so easy to buy tickets, I'd have none. I hide it on a website <laughs> somewhere with a test page. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, ten people find it. <laughs> Uh, Excellent. Murphy's Law. It's a secret. Yeah. It's like the Jade Monkey. <laughs> you need to unlock three different keys to be able to get to your event. This will be the most <laughs> successful event that no one's ever heard about. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Blood sport inspired. <laughs> That's right. It's the Kumite. It's the yeah. secret underground uh, fighting organization. Yeah. 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 At the bridgeway. That's right. <laughs> with, a, with a moat and crocodiles. Yes, that's right. If there's no moat I don't and know crocodiles. If three weeks is enough time, but I'm going to give it a red hot crack. <laughs> yeah, if anybody has a dingo, to, you can call into the show. We'll pass on the details, Matt. Will be chatting with the bridgeway later on this week. So, um, <laughs> do you have a ring announcer for the night? Or are you, he does. No, we have. No, no, no. I wasn't Jimmy, pulled off the bench for wow, this one. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. Jimmy Bang Bang. So you it is it? Jimmy Bang Bang. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Is he going to hold the egg beater? Uh, he's always holding egg beater. <laughs> <laughs> Mike in one hand, egg beater in the other. It's, it's really hard to hear him. Yeah. If somebody has to pass him the drink so he can... <laughs> he perfectly has somebody just under, yeah. under his arms. Just <laughs> That's great. Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah, so he's the one doing I'm, the ring announcing. I'm going to come back because I've, I've got something for Matt for the, for the big night. All right. Yeah. Wow. Well, and and Props. He, this is... This isn't the first event like this that you've ran, or this is. Yeah, this is our first event. Oh, so, awesome. uh, Yeah, we've never we've never done it before. So. Wow. Okay. A lot, a lot of learning, a lot of uh, running around, pulling my hair out. But yeah, that's we're at right. the. I don't want to jinx myself, but we're at a, we're at a good point now. We're at a we're at a point where I've I've ticked a few of the big ticket items off. Oh, good. That's fantastic. Yeah, and you've got you've got a few things organised, and and Dave's come up this with is, this a is big the real check blank here. Check, which, yeah. um, I just didn't bring the text to put dollars on. But oh no! <laughs> please give me blank checks. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's the that's the blank check for the. Which camera are we? Well, there is one pointed one straight at you here. that way, yeah. and that's now it's thing, going. It? It's so going that's the here. that's the blank check. So that's for you guys because thank you. We're, we're sponsoring the the fight the fight of the night or performance of the night, uh, whatever it is that you yeah. you want us to sponsor. Yeah. We're, we're sponsoring on the night. Yeah. So that's uh, the blank check. Yeah, like he's, also he said he's also sponsoring the bar for me and the boys. <laughs> 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 so, um, and who who is it the sponsoring it? Uh, real Real Estate Agents Group, the uh, the heavyweight champions of real estate. So uh, <laughs> there we go. So uh, thank you very much, um, Dave Stockbridge. And yeah, you should, th- you should send a big thank you to to Dave Dave Stockbridge Stockbridge. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. We'll send him an email later. <laughs> Sounds good. It really is appreciated, though. Like I know we joke around, but it's that to be. Uh, like kind of amateur sport you're developing to have sponsors that are willing to jump on board on your first show and be like yep we're ready to support you that's uh, very easy appreciated so I just want to say that amongst I will uh, I'll joke around with the best of them but it's, it's nice to nice to say the heartfelt thing sometimes too oh, well, well thanks for that and I, I just I was looking for an excuse to get a a, um, a, a comedy prop yeah. <laughs> for the show so it's uh, both our purposes and um, yeah, I've been looking forward to getting myself a big core flute check for a long long time and uh 
yeah, it's a real special moment to be able to give it away. Well, I yeah, see a few cool. more. So uh, if on future guests, <laughs> you may be uh, the podcast guest of the year. Yeah. <laughs> we should yeah, do something like that. It could be an chat. award, couldn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'd just give out like five bucks. Like, yeah, five the, bucks? Yeah. <laughs> the, thing, the huge check. Yeah, five yeah. The cost of producing the fake <laughs> check is more than the prize. I think that's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for any prizes into the future, apart from these ones. These, mm. uh, these ones. Is, the, Izzy did get one of those uh, in Queensland at the Over the Top tournament. She came oh. second or third, I think, in, in the women's division. It was probably Wonderful. three times the size of that. It was enormous. Really? That's impractical. That's yeah, silly. It was impractical, just but silly. she loved the fact that it was impractical <laughs> and carried it around with her everywhere throughout yeah. the casino. Everyone was asking Did she try to use it, it as an FPOS card? Like, did she try to swipe it? <laughs> <laughs> she had to check it in, like, through the airport. <laughs> It wouldn't fit through the scanner. No, it, it doesn't fit in the overhead either. I, I did give thought to that because I thought if it is a, an interstate, and also, you know, any any fighter that's going to be successful in the night is going to be doing two things after that fight, probably having a few drinks and definitely having something to eat. And uh, chances are, you know, it'll get a little bit uh, damaged or if it was too big or yeah. dropped or, you know, it, it, it deserves a spot on the mantle piece, one would imagine. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. But there you go. You are the first recipient of, uh, of well, of our, of, 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 <laughs> of our first blank check. Nothing to do with it all. <laughs> <laughs> but first blank check. Yeah. From the podcast. Yeah. 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 For $1,000. Right. Uh, it's, it's an honour. It's an honour. But we're really looking forward to it. Um, I've got I've got two tickets. Do you want to go? We've yeah, got, I've got two, go. two tickets, didn't I? I'll, I'll, take, you, I'll take your ticket if you don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'll, I'll go with you. Are you bringing? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're yeah, well, well, heard that. Well. Luckily, we just plugged how you can buy tickets. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, VIP, VIP seats, maybe. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and, it sounds like a great event. Can people watch it on a live stream or anything like that uh, on this occasion? No. So we, we we are having it professionally filmed, and okay. you'll be able to see it after the fact. But we've kind of gone the um, you know the local local sports route, which is if you want to see it, you've got to got to turn you've up. To, you've got to come see it. Mm. So um, yeah. yeah, if you want to see it afterwards, we're gonna we've got some things. That work, would, so. would that stop Rich Warner turning up and living it, <laughs> streaming it on Instagram with his phone? I'm pretty sure it's gonna be him just selfing his face is holding the phone. <laughs> 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 you got to look at the in, into the reflection in his eye. That's yeah. how you see the event. Yeah, because <laughs> from what I understand, Rich Water he commentates regardless. Right. He, he yeah, if you don't pay him to turn up, he doesn't oh. care. He'll just turn up. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just. You might as well put the microphone in front because then you get it for free. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But you don't always want Rich Warner to. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Indian toe wrestling, man. Actually, Rich should be back. Uh, I think he, I think he's back in Australia now, so uh, we'll, we'll have him back on the podcast very, very soon. Because oh, cool. uh, I know he's um, uh, really keen on um, on the event, the upcoming event, your your event there at uh, the Bridgeway Hotel. Um, and what's the name? Is it the Element something? Element event? Fight Night for now. Element, so we're, Element we're, Fight we're, Night. We're uh, we're brainstorming ideas if we. I like uh, that. That's good. Future ones, and we're open okay. to any suggestions. But. Mm-hmm. It works. I already had the logo, so... <laughs> what about the Matt Connolly? logos have you got? What about the Matt Connolly Classic? <laughs> yeah. That's been an idea I've been bouncing around. I think Bloodspot's the right Blood, Blood, That's right. Yeah. The, the Kumite. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bring it back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, have you seen Bloodspot? I've seen Bloodspot. Okay, yeah, good. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Like that would have disqualified me yeah, from any yeah. friendship movie. Stop forward. right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready to leave. If you <laughs> I never actually sat down to watch it. It was just permanently on the background whenever I went to uh, at my mate Daniel's place. So, oh, yeah, massive, massive fan. Yeah, I was yeah. so jealous. We had uh, Dave's uh, friend Daniel. Uh, this is completely unrelated to anything. <laughs> He's, Apparently, he something o- you should know now. Well, it is because he went over to um, uh, Hong Kong, to a- yeah, Asia, yeah. And, and he did a lot of film work there. And he worked with so many people that I'm big fans of. Yeah. And I'm like, my God, you got to work with this guy and this guy and this guy and Bruce Lee's, you know, this thing and that and that. And I was like, ah! So, yeah. It got was to do karaoke with Jean-Claude yeah. Van Damme. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Party with Jean-Claude Van Damme one night. So and then uh, he worked uh, Christian Bale. He was Christian Bale's stunt double. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. 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 He had a list of all my my <laughs> heroes, and he just went through them and went, ah, yeah, man. He never wanted to achieve any of those things. He was just hoping for a moment where it could upset you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like a long con like that. So. Yeah, <laughs> it, be, it began before it. he'd even met you. Yeah, he just knew somehow deep down in That's his right. genes. Yeah, yeah. And his mor- the morphic resonance of his junk DNA was telling right. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> first first martial arts. 
film or or that had an impact on you? It, was it Kickboxer or was it? Did you have? Uh, mine was Jackie Chan actually. Uh, Jackie Chan, the Young Master, was the first it was one. It's the gateway drug. Yeah. Jackie Chan's the gateway drug. Yeah. You think oh, martial arts still just fun, isn't it? It was, it was, it was fun was and getting fun out of sticky situations. Yeah, yeah. It was Jackie Chan beating everyone up with like a stool. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, and my dad called me in to watch it. He's like, "You got to see this." <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> this guy's beating people up with a stool. <laughs> you can't imagine a time now. Doesn't matter how good the thing is on TV That's that right. you're going to call one of your kids in. Come and have a look at this. You'll never see something it's like a, this again. It's a lesbian couple on Netflix. <laughs> what are they doing? They're talking. Yeah. <laughs> is that it? There's nothing. That <laughs> you got to watch it. You got to listen. <laughs> I don't know why we're all from New York. For we're from reason. New York when you got to. <laughs> <laughs> we all grew up in the old country. So. Jersey. Well, the listeners don't know that these guys were doing this for 45 minutes. When I first got here. <laughs> <laughs> Just couldn't get a word in. <laughs> Yelling at each other in terrible uh, accents. <laughs> it was the sound check. That's what we... <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta feel like I gotta start a support group for the other podcast <laughs> guests. I'm like, did, did they talk in weird New York accents to you for 20 minutes? Or? I'm hoping that's yes, what they all, did. Yes, they did. I'm, I'm hoping that's what all the proceeds and the sales for <laughs> Dirty Clean Eats is going towards so men's mental health and this podcast, <laughs> supporting men on this podcast. This is the long con. This is yeah, the long game. <laughs> it's all, it's all we circular. just did the podcast long enough for people to feel sorry for us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, these guys, I gotta give them some money. We gotta get some of that charity cash. <laughs> gotta give them some bananas. <laughs> uh, oh, so was it was it kickboxer? Yep, uh, <laughs> I reckon it was Three Ninjas. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Three Ninjas, kids movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it would have been kids movie. Like kickboxer would have been the first one when I was um, older. Mm. But nah, Three Ninjas would have yeah. been yeah. would have been the original. I reckon. Ah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all. The nah, I didn't, no, I was. Didn't, they, they, they didn't quite know. <laughs> I watched. Oh, then it would have been like it would have been like Dragon Ball Z. Would have ah, been the next one, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 but yeah. I reckon Three Ninjas when I was a real okay. kid. That would have been the first one. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. nice. There you go. And that was the first. And you're like, oh, I like this. Oh, well, this guy. That little kid's been up an adult. Yeah, yeah. It was really stick as yeah, well. Yeah, of course yeah. it was. <laughs> <laughs> that eight year old just destroyed that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's made him want a swift kick to the knee or do. That's the one. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And yeah. uh, so with your own uh, martial arts, like. Have you sort of gravitated towards one style or another that you like? Hey, I'm I'm really good in this area. Is it is it your grappling? Is it your striking? Is it something that like I'm talented in this? Um, I think I'm probably better grappler than a striker. I think everyone would probably agree with that. That's trained with me. I actually started doing striking. I started started doing kickboxing because I'd watch kickboxing, <laughs> um, and I had no interest whatsoever in doing grappling. I, like I got talked into hang around after kickboxing last one day and go, mm. oh, give this a go, and it was happened to be a 120 kilo purple belt which I <laughs> I'm like so <laughs> <laughs> not a black belt was that matter? Yeah. Um, and then I lost obviously and I just remember thinking to myself I'm like I'm gonna do this grappling business for a couple months and then I'll beat that guy and then I don't have to do it again <laughs> and obviously that's not how reality works <laughs> <laughs> 14 years later it's here still we shy. are still, still, still haven't beaten him <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of like a lot of Martial arts, I suppose. Like, I've, I've dabbled um, in, in most of the MMA-based ones. Um, I've done a little bit of judo, done a little bit of wrestling, kickboxing, boxing. But, yeah, jiu-jitsu is probably where it all came back for me. And then, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an old man, but I'm certainly older than, than the average, you know, 22-year-old age or 22 to 25-year-old age for, um, for athletes and professional uh, professional athletes. So uh, jiu-jitsu is the one that I kind of gravitate more and more to because you can do it and have success without as much wear and tear. And mm. It's not as reliant on some of the athletic abilities. Certainly um, athleticism can help you in jiu-jitsu and certainly some really athletic people do jiu-jitsu. But um, because you're already on the ground, it can take, it can take away some of, those, uh, some of those things that diminish with age and, mm. and you can keep doing it, have fun, you still compete at a high level. Whereas, you know, if you're... Sp- if I'm boxing and sparring mm. every night, well, that's mm. probably not the best idea for me to do every uh, do for the rest of my life continually. Even even some of the other um, some of the other martial arts where it's explosive movements, and we're standing up. There's just more things that can go wrong. So, still a uh, still a student, still a big uh, big enthusiast of, of of those martial arts. But I'd say primarily uh, doing jiu-jitsu most days these days because I can I can do it and and keep doing it. Yeah, mm. yep. and, it, and it seems like uh, to, it, it, just in speaking with you today and and in, and. And having spoken to uh, other people connected with the gym, you, you really are all about creating opportunities so people can enjoy martial arts at all levels. And, and you speak of 
uh, your own experience of having, yes, got in the cage, but also realising that you know, probably your best contribution to the sport is going to be outside the cage, helping those people develop and their skills and, and find their way in. And, um, and in the same way that you're now helping people who have maybe never previously ever thought about uh, fighting um, or who might have felt like they weren't in the, the shape of their life to, to give them a purpose so that they've got a reason to get up in the morning, get the discipline, get the right rituals and, and get themselves in the right frame of mind where they can actually um, have the um, uh, have the inner strength to be able to um, step into, potentially step into the cage or, or feel like they've made a big difference in their lives. Um, and, and also um, in speaking to Damien Bowler last week, uh, creating opportunities for, for athletes to basically live their dream full time. So Damien was explaining that's one of the opportunities that have been created through Element is that now he's full time, he feels like he's an MMA athlete who he helps others, he's training, he's at the gym, but he's, uh, when he's not helping others, he's developing his own skill set and, and uh, working on himself so he can get himself to that next level. Yeah, I like to think he created the opportunity for himself by uh, being good because if he wasn't a good coach, then he wouldn't be coaching. Yeah. Um, so like, I, it's nice of him to say that, but you know, he, people make their own destinies and, and, and him being in the position he is now is a result of his hard work more than uh, anything I've done or anything that Jim's done. But it is nice that we can have that environment where you know, people can, can do what they need to do. So mm. um, one thing I think that Jim, a trap you can fall into or um, something I was very conscious of when we started is, is Jim's can tend to go one, or, one of two ways is they become um, hyper-focused on elite talent and then it's you and your two mates in the corner and you don't have eventually one of them gets married or gets a girlfriend and then it's you and one mate and then there's no one left. Yeah. Um, or you go down the other route and you make it, you know, turn into a McDojo. It's, it's great. It's a profitable business. We're turning over, but we're, we're kind of losing the point. Mm. Um, so one of the things I've really focused on is kind of merging those. Like I like to think that Element's the type of place you can – we, we attract um, a lot of professional – we've, we've, I've been really uh, – surprised but impressed by how many people have joined us from other sports where they've been professional athletes and it's always nice um to be in a sport that's kind of emerging and have people come from more established sports and go oh wait you guys are you guys are on the right track i've had people come from other big established gyms overseas or people that have done you know professional sports here and go oh you know you guys are on the right track this is similar to when i played football or when i played over here you're 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 doing the same type of things. Mm. Um, and so I like the having the aspect of the professional athletes having that avenue. Um, but at the same time, I want it to be for everyone. Most people who do martial arts are going to do it and they're just going to be a better husband, a better wife, a better boyfriend, better at your job because you, you, you strangled someone last night so you're not thinking about <laughs> strangling your boss. Like, you know, th these things are making yourself 1% better. That You don't have to be dedicating your whole life to it. You want to have a bit of work-life balance or a bit of life balance. So you might want to, you might want to train a couple of nights a week Get fit. You're better than you were yesterday. Yeah, you know, Damo exists in the gym. He's a handful. He's a handful for me. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you don't have to be trying to compete and be the best in the world to also get a lot of benefit out of things. So um, I think we do a pretty good job of that. It's something we're always working, always trying to develop. But having a having avenues where brand new beginners like you can come in to our gym with zero fitness, zero idea. You don't know what any of the words are. You've never seen a never seen anything of anything. You can come in and we can take you through and we can build you up to a point where you're competent. Um, and you can come in and go, hey, like I want to be, I want to be the best in the world, and we've got programs for you there too. So yeah, so in, in as much as it's really a place for everybody to come, uh, you you really do have some outstanding talent that's uh, now competing uh, at the highest level in this country. Um, perhaps before we go, um, who are some of those stand standout athletes at Element currently that you're really excited about and really looking forward to seeing big things come off in the next uh, twelve to eighteen months? Or who you think might be exploding on the scene that we've not yet heard about? Yeah, so we've spoken a lot about Mr. Pooh Bear. So um, <laughs> he's obviously fighting for the uh, for the title at uh, at uh, Apex. Apparently, most likely <laughs> <laughs> coming up if we can find someone for him. Yeah, um, well, he's called out nearly everyone in the state and most people in uh, overseas too. So I'm sure he's I'm sure he's pissed off enough people that someone wants, <laughs> someone wants to punch him. Someone's going to react. Yeah. Um, but we've got you know he's great. We've got. Um, some of our, like they're not quite even a development squad, they're one of our established, some of our established people like, like your Deans, like your um, Sam the Jockey that have been, been trading with us for a while. And we've got um, another Sam, Sam Warren, another, another thing with like, with uh, mysterious names, but he's, you know, he's previously fought for the title at, um, at DFC and I think yep. he's, uh, he's hankering for a return. So uh, they're the ones that are kind of sticking out at the moment. Again, I'm sure I've forgotten someone. It's not Tally Grace. 
So Talia is actually from uh, Barossa. Uh, like, from Barossa. So yep. I, I would love to. I'd love to claim her as much as, as <laughs> possible. She's a fantastic fighter and yep. um, a great athlete, great attitude. Um, but you got to give credit credit to you that that's a that's a you know she comes down and trains with us every once in a while. She's getting her she's getting her growth at our Barossa club. So that's um, under Tommy Gerlach, who's the head coach of our Barossa club. Obviously, her dad's the the striking coach there, and I know um, John's the helps out with the MMA there as well. So they're getting some great. Uh, um, they've got some great talent coming up as well, so they've got some they've got some ones to watch as well. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll let them speak for themselves. They were a team, but they're their own thing. They they get all the credit for, for what they produce. Absolutely. Well, uh, I believe those one or two times that she does come to Adelaide, she learns the most from those. <laughs> no, I didn't say <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they're they're doing great things out there. If you if you're out that way, definitely go check it out. So to be in a uh, if you were living in any other state, that'd be the city. But to be able to be in a <laughs> to be in a country town, you see, you know, hour out of the out of town, and, and get such quality training that you you know you don't normally you don't normally get. The further you get away from the hubs, is uh, they're doing some great things out there. Pretty extraordinary, yeah. A, a, a great bunch of people, and much like yourself, doing amazing things, developing fantastic young talent, and uh, and I guess that culminates in some part with. Uh, the 3rd of December at the Bridgeway Hotel with the Element Fight Night is what we're still going with. That's, what, that's, that's, that's what's on the poster. So that's on the poster. One, so Element Fight Night. We I'm going, we're going with it. Element Fight Night um, and uh, some spectacular young young talent um, uh, will be on display and uh, and you can get your tickets through your affiliated clubs. So if you, if you know anybody who might be fighting, quickly hit them up, let them know uh, you're keen, get your tickets organised. And if not, and you're really good at Google, you might be able to find some tickets online sometime if in the next couple of days. If you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, at some point in the next day, or depending on when this le- is le- released, mm-hmm. maybe sometime yesterday, yes. uh, you it, we, we might be link. in the future. Yeah. Um, and I might be in the future right now. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, those those links are, where can, where can people find you guys on the socials? Uh, so we're on Facebook and Instagram, mm-hmm. Element Fight Night Instagram, Element Fight Night on Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, elementmartialarts.com.au is, is my gym account gym address don't yep. type in element fight night in google because i own the rights to it but i haven't built the website yet so okay. i'm not going to get you anywhere <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's <laughs> the secret take, coming soon to a landing page that doesn't go anywhere so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so finding tickets might prove difficult but if you've got them uh every chance they'll be worth a fortune exactly. by the fight night because no one else would have been you're one of the lucky few. you're one of the lucky few <laughs> exactly <laughs> so uh so a big big night looking forward to it mate thanks so much for coming in absolutely fantastic to to have you in here and to share that your not only your journey but that of elements over recent times and uh, wishing you um, even more ongoing success as we approach 2023 mate thank you very much for having me absolute pleasure thank you